says, I wish, I wish I worked hard for my life. He understood only then that his true life is the life hereafter, not this temporary insignificant world that he got too busy in. At dunya sijn al mu'min, the world is like a prison for a mu'min. A mu'min, one who desires Allah, one who desires paradise, that's a mu'min. Are you one of them, brothers and sisters? If you desire paradise, then you work for it. Are you happy with the life of this dunya? What is the life of this dunya in the hereafter except very, very little? Oh people, work for the hereafter. For indeed, I have seen in my life, anyone who works for the hereafter also gets the dunya. The dunya goes after him, runs after him. But I've never found anyone who works for this dunya ever get any peace of the hereafter. We are living in a place that is not an end in and of itself, but rather a means to an end. A place that is considered the temporary and exists before the perpetual. And this place is known as the dunya. A place of highs and a place of lows as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala journeys to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reality of our life here. We are on a journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this journey aptly in his book. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحًا فَمُلَاقِهِ Allahu Akbar. Allah likens our journey to him to a farmer that toils under the hot sun with his pick, tilling his land so that he can plant in order to ascertain a harvest. Brothers and sisters, I have a question for you. What do you wish for? What do you wish for? What do you desire? What do you anticipate to reach? What do you anticipate to reach, brothers and sisters? What is it that you yearn for? What is it that you long for? What is it? Ask yourself that question. What is your ambition? Do you wish for a beautiful wife or a gorgeous husband who has got popularity, who everyone looks up to so that you can show off with him or her? Do you desire a beautiful mansion and lots of money? Is that what you desire? Or do you anticipate to reach a firm, lifelong career? Do you anticipate that? Do you yearn for luxurious dwelling, a land, or probably one day to buy an island of your own? Do you long for fame and popularity and fortune? Do you miss having all of that? If this is what you are desiring and anticipating for and yearning for, then my dear brother or sister, you have been deceived. You have been deceived by this world, all of its fortune, all of its beauty. Because this beauty which you see in front of you, as Allah describes it in the Quran, is like a flower that grows in the ground. It gets watered from the rain and then it blossoms. It has a nice fragrance and it looks beautiful. But then it only lasts for about a month or less. And then suddenly it starts to wither away. And you have no more attention towards it. As if it never had existed before. And becomes soil and dirt. It is the love of this world that is destroying every single one of us in this room today. Especially the man that stands before you. So, no brother me, I don't love world. Allah says in the Quran, وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا Allah says, Verily you love wealth. We're clinging on to rubbish. We're clinging on to that which will be left. We're hanging on to that which will go nowhere. And it's killing every single one of us. You know, Wallahi, I went to Hajj this year. And Alhamdulillah, I've been on Deen for I don't know how long and you know, in and out and lessons and sitting with my Shaykh and whatever have you. But even on the day of Arafat, I struggled. 
I absolutely struggled to get a tea. Just one tea, I want something to fall. Nothing. Because this heart can only take so much. And this heart, instead of filling it up with the love of Allah, I filled it up with the love of this dunya. The time is now, my brothers and sisters of Islam, for you to take on that responsibility in your hands. The time is now to remember the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, ma lakum, ma lakum idha qeela lakum infiru fi sabeeli Allahi thaqaltum ila al-ard, araditum bil hayati al-dunya min al-akhira, wa ma al-hayati al-dunya fi al-akhirati illa qaleel. What is Allah saying? Oh, people who believe, what is wrong with you? When it is told to you, when someone tells you, go out in the path of Allah, go out struggling in the path of Allah, that you stick yourselves, throwing yourself to the ground. Are you happy with the life of this dunya? What is the life of this dunya in the hereafter except very, very little? My brothers and sisters in Islam, if you prefer this dunya, over the hereafter by Allah, Allah will give us a disgrace in this dunya and He will not remove it until we return back to Him. My brothers and sisters in Islam, have you seen how Allah disgraced those people who prefer this dunya over the hereafter? What a disgrace. And by Allah, have you seen the example of those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed to prefer the hereafter over this dunya? Al Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, he said in, the, in that beautiful narration from him, Oh people, work for the hereafter. For indeed, I have seen in my life, anyone who works for the hereafter also gets the dunya. The dunya goes after him, runs after him. But I have never found anyone who works for this dunya ever get any peace of the hereafter. Ask yourself, for which cause are you spending most of your time? As the scholars of Islam said, verily the love of this dunya and the love of the hereafter like two scales. When one becomes heavy, the other one becomes light. When the other one becomes heavy, the other one becomes light. My brothers and sisters in Islam, if our Prophet ﷺ was here today, and he said, Oh people, come with me. Come with me towards this or that cause. What answer would we give Rasulullah ﷺ? Allah says in the Quran, I'lamu, know, understand. Acknowledge, learn this, understand this always, be conscious about it. That, اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد. Know that this worldly life, الحياة الدنيا, is only playing, لعب, له, entertaining yourselves. زينة, decoration, تفاخر بينكم, challenging each other. Who can get the best house? Who can get the fastest cars? Who can look the most beautiful? Who can have more money? Tafakhurun baynakum, Allah says. And this is what the world of life is about. And everyone tries to beat everyone else in becoming or reaching that high seat. Yes, it is a life of challenge, challenging each other. fil amwali wal awlad. And people love in this life to have lots of money, lots of children in order to have a strong back. It blossoms for a little bit and then it fades away, brothers and sisters. If this is what you are yearning for, longing for, missing and being anxious about, I'm sad to say, brothers and sisters, that you are in a very great loss because when you die, and we all shall die, you're just going to have to leave it all behind you. Subhanallah. All of that, we're going to leave it behind us. What does Rasulullah say in the hadith? Teaching us, teaching me and you. يَتْبِعُ الْمَيْتَ ثَلَاثَ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ Three things follow the funeral, follow the dead. His, his family, and his money, and his what? And this deed, his a'mal, his actions, whether good or bad. فَيَرْجِعِ اثْنَانِ Two things must return. See, oh, this family, mashaAllah, my brothers, my mother, my father, my wife, my kids, the most valuable people to me, the, the most beloved people to me. No matter how much they love you, no matter how much they care for you, what will happen? They will come, follow the janazah, a bit of tease, and then what will happen? 
What will happen? How long will they stay with you in the grave? They'll put you in your grave. Stay there for one hour, two hours, and then what? They have to leave. No matter how much they love you, they will leave you. They will go. Your wife probably will get married again. Your mother will forget about you. Your kids. This, that. Life goes on. Life goes on. But what stays with you? What continues with you as a gift, as a gift, as a blessing? In this world and in the next? This deen. Stays with you. Saves you in the qabr. Saves you on the salat. Saves you on judgment day. But your family, although you love them, you love them. You, you understood their value. You had this attachment to them. What left you? Your money. Oh, I worked hard. How hard do we work for our money? If a person loses $10,000, what happens to him? Have you ever seen a person that lost, just lost $10,000? What happens? You find him, he's there. He's not here. He's, he's about to faint. People, people, people die in the stock exchange, sah? They hear the news. Ah, oh, you, uh, you lost $1 million. Boom, death. He dies on the spot. Why? He worked so hard for this money. Have you ever seen a person crying in the mosque? Crying in the mosque. What's wrong, brother? He goes, Wallah, I missed Salat al-Fajr. He's crying in the mosque. Why? Because he missed Salat al-Fajr. So what? If you, lose a, if you lose a kid, people understand. You lost your car, people understand. But you miss Salat al-Fajr in the mosque? What? What's the story? Less than 1%, less than 1% of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu nowadays pray Fajr in the masjid. And what did Rasulullah sallallahu say? He said, if people only knew the reward of praying Fajr and Isha in the masjid, they would come crawling. Crawling. This dunya that Rasulullah sallallahu warned us from, what did he say sallallahu This world is green and beautiful. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى مُسْتَخْلِفُكُمْ فِيهَا فَيَنْظُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given you responsibility for in this world. To see, it's a test. وَيَنْظُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ What's the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu فَاتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا Beware of this world. Don't let this world fool you. Don't let this dunya trick you. Everyone now, everyone now, what's the excuse? Brother, come to the mosque. Brother, return to Allah. Wallah, I'm busy. Wallah, I'm busy. I am busy. I have no time. What do you mean you have no time? What do you mean you have no time? This is why you created. This is why you're here. The reason of your existence is to pass this religious test. Deen, you are here for deen. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا worship me. You are here for this deen. And then you say, I'm busy. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum, wala awladukum an dhikrillah. Never, ever, ever, ever allow, never allow your kids or your money to make you busy, to keep you busy from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa man yaf'al dhalika and whoever falls in this mistake, then verily, these are the losers. Let's, let's, say, let's be honest with ourselves and take a look around you. What's the excuse of everyone? Wallah, brother, I'm busy. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I have no time for deen. I have no time for the Quran. I have no time to come to the mosque. I have no time to learn my deen. I have no time for da'wah. I have no time, I have no time, I have no time. Didn't you, didn't you hear the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Didn't you hear this ayah? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning, never allow, never allow, never let your kids and your money make you busy from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you fall in this sin, then verily you are the losers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need, does not need any of us. He does not need any of us. We need Allah. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help us, to assist us, to guide us. O servants of Allah, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says in a hadith Qudsi, Ya ibn Adam, O oh, son of Adam, innakum tukhti'oona bil-layli wal-nahar. Indeed, you sin throughout the day and you sin throughout the night. Wa ana aghfiru al-dhunuba jami'a. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who forgives all sins. Fastaghfiruni aghfir lakum. Thus seek forgiveness for your mistakes and consider your mistakes forgiven. Allahu Akbar. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says, Ya ibn Adam, O oh son of Adam, لو بلغت ذنوبك أنان السماء ثم استغفرت لي لغفرتها لك ولا أبالي. O oh son of Adam, 
if you sinned and sinned, you lived a life of sin that amassed to such an to such a great amount that it reached the surfaces of the skies. Allahu Akbar. Imagine how many sins a person has to do to fill the atmosphere that they live in. Allah says, if you sin this much, and then you sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَغَفَرْتُهَا لَكَ اللَّهُ will forgive your sins for you. وَلَا أُبَالِي And it won't even matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَقُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون